All you have to do is close your eyes and listen. Welcome to episode 27 of TSGG Chat. I'm your host, Kevin Bork. With me this week is Jake, Brett, and Brennan. Welcome, boys. Thanks for that strange intro. Good boys. to be back, boy. boys. <laughs> Welcome, squad. men. I can't believe that's better. You like that better? I do, yes. I actually okay. Thank also, you. You like boy? Episode 27. It just hit me that you said that. That's, yeah. That's a lot of episodes. We're here. We are. We we are <laughs> we are. Here. I don't know why twenty seven hit me as hard as it did, but I was like, "Holy cow!" That's yeah, a lot of time. Do the going, math man. on that. Still that's a twenty seven weeks. That's at least twenty seven yeah. hours at least. Okay, that's way over that. It's like fifty four. Yeah, 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 last week's was way two way hours. So, I, and I said at least. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but before we begin, first head over and sign up with us at tsgg online. Follow us on Twitter at the social gg. Now. Now. Right, this <laughs> right now at this moment subscribe to us at youtube.com slash the society watch us at twitch.tv slash tsgg online and you can also subscribe to us at patreon.com slash tsgg tune in to our twitch on december 2nd at 12 p.m for our extra live stream where we will play games to raise money for sick kids Extra life stream two. Yes. Episode, two Second go round. Episode two. Trying to get trying to get those kids. The at the least the I don't actually know what it does go to. It's Children's Miracle Network, but do they yeah. buy toys or does it go towards No, like it actually goes to their, their treatment. Medical like research. Yeah. Things that they need, treatment, stuff like that. It is a very, very good treatment. I know they do do a Christmas as well, so it is that time of year, so yeah. they definitely Need all the help they can get. It does go to our local Children's uh, Miracle Network, uh, our Samaritan Hospital. That it does. Let's talk about some news. And what do we got? Don't forget, the Game Awards are coming. December 6th, Jeff Keighley, back again. That's going to be good. Can't wait. Well, it's going to be good for one. Biggest show ever, he says. So, oh, okay, so which actually brings up a really good Fable. question. What? You think so? If it's the biggest show ever, yeah. what is PlayStation showing us? What is Sony showing us? If they don't, because they've already pulled out, you know, which is coming later in the show. It is. But what are they showing us? What do you think we see? Hold up, they pulled out, they, they pulled out. We're going to talk about that. Talk about oh, that. okay, the other thing. So I, I, thought they, yeah. I thought they pulled out of the Game no, Awards. No, no, I was going to say, no, no. no. Well, they never officially announced anything. That's what I'm wanting. That's Awards. what I'm thinking. Because what what are we going to see? Do you think? What title do you see from first party Sony? Ghost of Tsushima. No, it's if you had to choose one, it's got to be The Last of Us. Oh yeah, I guess. Kevin, if I had to choose one, it'd be Ghost of Tsushima. If I had actually, choose... you know what? If I had to choose one, I'm it's changing Kojima. my mind. It's Kojima. Yep. Because he's going to be there. So. I was going to say, that's probably what we see. It'll be another it's be Death Stranding. two minute cinematic of who knows what. Two minutes? That's what the that, Tokyo Game Show that was. Last one was. Seven minutes. I was going to say, that last one was like four minutes long and it oh, was it insane. Was two minutes. Tokyo Game Show? Mm -hmm. or game, no, the video, game, the video game awards gets a seven minute oh, movie. Okay. The seven minute portion of the movie? Yeah. Of the it's movie? really a movie. Because it's a movie. It is a movie. <laughs> it's going to be the PS5 launch movie. <laughs> I mean, he is working with Gu uh, Guillermo del Toro. I can't even say his wow. name. Wow. Yeah, that was Guillermo. close. It's Guillermo. a Y sound. Yeah. Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, Guillermo. It's okay. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, Guillermo's, Guillermo. Guillermo's <laughs> in the horrible. game. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen is in the game. Norman. Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus is the star, is of, the star the of the game. Kevin. And we in that two-minute trailer you're talking about, that was uh, legendary video game voice actor Troy Baker. The Enemy? Yeah, Ooh, I love the gold they did mask that quite well. I yeah. liked him. The golden legendary dude. He did. <laughs> that was done so well that I immediately was like, 
Who is this? How do I play this? Yeah. Oh, I watch it. Okay, that's right. <laughs> it's a movie. You watch every cinematic. I'm going to watch it again. It's I want one get... cinematic. I, I wonder what actually happens if you watch them all one after the other. Nothing. You're going to find <laughs> out when you press play. <laughs> Confusion <laughs> actually is what's going to happen. So More confusion than before. Questions are going to be thrown out that you that you thought we weren't going to ask. But the way Kojima does things, I wonder if it it does work together in some way. Oh yeah, it definitely. will. He's a master. So I didn't even check on that He's after watching it because we all watched it at least once or twice. I didn't notice if Norman Reedus's character had a weapon during that time. I don't believe so. I don't think he. No, I he was just making a delivery. His hands are weapons. <laughs> oh. It was in one of the boxes. Have you back. seen? Maybe. Because yeah. I know that Season one of them... Two of The Walking he, Dead. <laughs> he's unkillable. So, I mean, that's the thing to notice because that also tells you probably how the game is played if all of a sudden you don't have... Maybe there aren't the weapon. The weapons aren't in the cutscenes. Possibly, or, or too. maybe the weapons aren't what we think of as weapons. Conventional. Yeah, like, True to, yeah conventional Maybe he's weapons. got some infamous powers. Or maybe it just appears. It doesn't... Or a grappling hook. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> does have that. We... Think, who knows? <laughs> we don't know what he's got. Or he's know. a space baby. Just when you think he's got something, melty stuff goes all around him, and something <laughs> happens. Kind so. of black goo, handprints all over him. Who knows? If anybody be, could give us a good uh, <laughs> information <laughs> about that, please. Kojima's going right to tell us all about it. it. So, does anybody disagree that it would no, be would something ex- else? That's what yeah. I would expect to see. Because he's going to be a judge. Uh, their best uh, student game. Mm. He's a judge for that. Oh, so. that's cool. That's yeah. awesome. That's literally learning from the best. If you're, if he's got tips for the winners yeah. or whatever, mm-hmm. that's awesome. So I fully expect that his game's going to be there. Oh, you you have to be. He'll probably do a panel afterwards. And I also think you see Last of Us as well. But that is, they do. Would... They're not really that big on the trailers, though. They're they're big on the announcements. So if they would do a trailer for Death Stranding, but I don't think they would do many Multiple. trailers right. for Sony. So unless other I, games are coming out like with release dates, then maybe. But it it builds so much hype when you do it that way, when you release something like that, because... Like, look at what Cyberpunk did. Look at the hype that that built for that game. Dead inside. Yeah. And the 40 minutes, the 40 minute gameplay afterwards 40, that came yeah, out like, a month ago. Well, that's what happened. Right, yeah. The same thing. Absolutely. Wow. Minute demo. Yeah, 48 minute demo. 40. Which... He knows every single minute what's happening. Can he give me the seconds? 48, 24. Oh. He could give you the timestamps. <laughs> all of them. Every second. Watch all of it. It's so, worth it to watch because uh, that game is going to be. Tremendous. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thing I'll ever touch. Mm. Until whatever comes out next from CD Projekt Red. <laughs> Project. Mm. You're right. <laughs> Project Red. Brendan says this as he has a shrine at home dedicated. Oh, not a shrine. He does. <laughs> you don't. It's a whole temple. <laughs> you, you built it in my back. <laughs> I pray what? at it, Dave. That speaks more volumes about you than it does about him. <laughs> so we kind of, we already touched on what our biggest hopes for announcements were. What are some of the realistic ones you guys think we're going to see at the Game Awards? Oh, what do you absolutely know that's going to be there? Oh, I don't absolutely know anything, but I'm fairly positive Fable is going to be there. You think so? I mean, he said it's their biggest one ever, so I would expect a ton of announcements. If, probably if more Halo Infinite. Ooh, uh, probably ooh, more yeah, Gears Halo. of War. So happy. Uh, Gears Five. Oh, Gears Five. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Well, that looked pretty far along in the actual production so, of that. Far so with that, though, this is all literally you guys hit with every Xbox thing that they that they talked about. So you don't think mo- any PlayStation is going to hit up there except for Death Stranding? Well, well oh, we said The like, Last of Us Part Two is probably going to hit I was thinking. I was thinking those two. I don't think Ghost. I think they're going unless, to unless, the, unless we're getting release dates. I think they're going to announce the release date no for way. The Last of Us. I think they will, too. I think so. Because they have to now. There's... What are they doing right now? Right. <laughs> uh, if they so, don't, who knows what they're doing right remember, now. Remember, <laughs> up really for like, PS5 would no be idea. my guess. The Game Awards are December 6th, and you can go to their website to see the correct time because they have a whole chart for you there because they are broadcasting all around the world. So wherever you are located, check out their chart, and you can see how to watch it and when. Are we, uh, are we streaming that and 
live stream. Doing our reactions? Yes, we, we are. are. Okay. Well, when are we doing that, Kevin? December, December 6th. 6th on Twitch. On Twitch. Slash. Twitch.tv. Twitch. 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 No, online. No, no dot. Online. Oh, yeah. I gave you the Twitch. website address. Dot TV <laughs> slash TSGG online. They know the Twitch address. I just was trying to get them to the no, that Stay up, tuned so. for more details on the specifics of That's our stream. All the details. We have to have a discussion, and then we'll let you guys know. All the deets. Uh, up next in the news. So we told you last week that Mr. Tabata left Square Enix. And Square Enix is in the news once more because the studio that Mr. Tabata helped form Luminous Productions, is working on a new AAA <laughs> title for PS5. And this is according to an employee's LinkedIn resume, which has since been taken down. Naturally. But Risa Era, as they do, were able to get a screen grab of the entry and the employee's uh, prior work history on Final Fantasy XV. He was then let go immediately. <sighs> No, nope. I don't think so. No, he you is the like, okay, 3D guys. character model lead artist and 3D graphic designer. The He's not going anywhere. Sense it. It said uh, Luminous Productions, Square Enix Group. He did Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition, uh, multiplayer expansion, Comrades episode, Arden episode, Aranea episode, Luna Freya episode, Noctis. He was working on, and did it. Half the of those all are sold. gone. They're all gone, Arden. except for Arden. And yeah, Comrades is out as well. And the Windows Edition is out. So everything he worked on was immediately canceled. No. The Windows Edition is out. Comrades is out. Arden's coming out. And then the new AAA title for PS5. Right. So it's it's still a company under Square Enix? Yeah, Illuminous Productions is part of Square Enix that oh, about that's... started. That's really that's a that's a unique thing though. The guy just literally stopped all the production for fifteen to make a another company underneath Square Enix to work on the no, 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 no. Luminous no. was formed in March, and they were focusing on AAA titles. Mm. Tabata left and is making yeah. his own company currently. Luminous is not his company. He it's was originally he was originally heading that. Oh, okay, all right. And that's why I was confused. He on. left last week. And then Square Enix is also developing. They're, they're in the news this week because they're working on a AAA title for PS5. And Square Enix is, like is, it, has which announced. is going to be sixteen, maybe. No, you don't think so. Seven. Remake, We're talking about maybe? the the the, no, quote, the quoted not. the quoted last idea. The right. director of Kingdom Hearts Three is doing the remake. The last idea thing that Square Enix is doing, or is that what we're talking about, or still on? What are you talking about? Final Fantasy, The Last Idea? Yeah. Apparently so that's the next game. I posted an image on this a little while ago that uh, Squeenix has announced a new title that they're working on called Last Idea, I'm pretty sure. Is that the code name or the actual name? I'm fairly sure that's the code name. Yeah, it's probably a working code title. name, yeah. Hold on, I'll know. find it in just a second. Do you have any other information on it? Mm, didn't they just kind of post it on that? So, gosh. Like, we already know that the PlayStation 5 is coming and we also we already know, know that's that, the title for it though no we don't but we do know that the dev kits are out there so that was announced so developers have it very nice well that's probably what ghost was streaming on then when we first saw it because that's not this gen no they said that was the ps4 pro yeah they can say what they want but well I, like i said i think it was but i also think that was what you saw was all they had in that entry because you can't have that Tsushima Island as that quality. fully rendered yeah, like that. It just as you keep adding to it, the the quality is just gonna well, yeah, you're gonna lose it. It's gonna yeah. have to work on other parts, right? The engine just so can't handle it. Had that hold that uh, seven minute portion that they showed us. Yeah, like you saw you, you saw in in the background when you were having your duel, mm -hmm. you see the Mongols coming, like, and when they get there. You start fighting them, so they're coming over that hill way in the background. So that's that's a very nice engine. Sucker Punch is doing a great job over there. Cannot wait to play that game. What you got, Jake? Well, you'll be okay, so uh, this is the only thing I, I got. I think they're all PS4 launch titles, or well, not PS5, but PS. Titles. No, PS4 titles. Oh, you think no. so? Oh no, 
Not a chance. I no. don't think they're. Well, we'll talk about that in a bit. What so, you got? So this is from. Uh, I'm, I'm looking this up online right now, and I, I found it there from uh, Gamenesia dot com. They have a little bit more information on it. So shout out to you guys for this info. Square Enix recently filed a trademark for Last Idea. That's what it's called in quotations, and it's a trademark. Uh, uh, and they also made a Twitter account with the handle Last Idea underscore RPG. And that's it. Nothing else. That's it. So that could be it. So if they trademark the last idea, it sounds like that's the game's name. Yeah. Because if if they're trade, they're, you don't trademark a code name. No, no. I mean, the way that that sounds like it. I mean, the the original origin story of Final Fantasy was it was their last, you know, their last big RPG, and they thought they were going to go under. So that's why it's called Final Fantasy because it was supposed to be their final, the final game. One. So I mean, if they're if they're making a game that's called Last yeah. Idea, I mean, perhaps. They're not as, you know, put together as we thought. Stable. No, they're. It doesn't it, make any sense, though. It's probably a shout out to it yeah. being that, if that's the origin story. But they're fine. Do you think it's like a, uh, a Final Fantasy yeah, no, rework? There's, there's nothing wrong with them. <laughs> no, not a, they're not going anywhere. They do their like, own. They do their own E3 conferences and everything. They're fine. They are fine. Oh, you're right. They also the announce play- games and they just take it back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, they have yeah, like 19 different titles. Monsters. Yeah. I mean, if you want to really Tomb look Raider, at that, they announced Hitman. it and then it, all of their cold just following said, oh my God, give me that. And it yeah. drummed up a whole bunch of new interest for yeah, all of them. They're very too. smart so at that. They've done, yeah. they, back, uh, back when the PlayStation 2 announced, or I think it was like the PlayStation 3, they're like, yeah, here's some, here's some, here's some footage of fi- Final Fantasy 7. Oh, the tech demo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, technical demo showing the limitations of PlayStation 3. They did the train scene. The train station scene. God, it looks so cool. Man, you've been seven. holding out hope for just decades. Now. you got to sure. understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. It was... Actually, uh, the director of Kingdom Hearts 3 said that uh, they are moving at a really good pace on the remake right now. And he said that everything yeah. that they're doing with Kingdom Hearts 3 is not holding it up at all. Yeah, well, which really is great pace, news. Like an episode every four it's great or five news years. For I mean, Kingdom Hearts three. I mean, you oh, know, well, we've seen Kingdom Hearts wait. three. Kingdom stuff. Hearts three. That, looks yeah. so that good. game is going to be Ooh. incredible. I mean, let's do the math. How long did it take from Kingdom Hearts two to Kingdom Hearts three? Though that was uh, right. That was like eight it's years. Worth, wasn't it? Very worth long time. the wait. It's not that long. And seven. When did two and a half come out? Worth the wait. Well, they were two and a half was just a. They they just added the they they gave you like a hint to what's coming and then they added all the games together and said well these are all the games that we have on yeah. file for Kingdom Hearts. Here's your package. Of Three Kingdom years Hearts ago, stuff. two years ago. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like they went dark on it. They no, kept... of course not. They've been right. They've so been. It's not like King, It's not like Final Fantasy VII where it's been literally <laughs> over a decade. Nineteen ninety eight, nineteen ninety seven. Okay, two decades. Mm. Mm. Sorry, I was born in and that trailer. <laughs> The trailer, you Final Fantasy, baby, you. I think it was uh, E3 2012 where that reveal happened. Oh, that cinematic, ago. yeah. That hurt me. Yeah. Well, they didn't. They didn't have. Everything went dark, and then they came out with. And there was actually gameplay trailers showing actual footage, and that whole studio was. This was just after I think they 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 had. They've had Enix for a couple of yeah, years. They redirected, got rid of all that footage, got rid of that studio. And now the director of Kingdom Hearts 3 has taken over the project. And they have original members of the production staff of the original Final Fantasy 7 on this. And they said they're going to keep this 100% accurate. Even so much so that you will be cross-dressing as Cloud. And they will make it fun and funny. Oh well, yeah, I would, I would hope so. Well, that scene yeah. was funny. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's supposed to be. They're they the reason they would announce it in that way is because of I forgot the Don's the name was level that that wait, comes wait, out wait, with. Wait, they're supposed to. There's, so there's, they're just remaking the. They're it's not a hundred percent remake. It? It's, it's a full remake. Saying. Well, it's going to be a remake that's going to be a completely different game, though. Like, right. This is not turn-based strategy. It's going to be oh, hack and slash yeah, Kingdom Hearts right, style gameplay. It's the same, same story. story. And that's hopefully, thing. hopefully retuned to make more sense because oh, well, not retuned, just more depth. And yeah, to make more sense because yeah. they didn't really make much sense. And well, I mean, they were at their limitation. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. So it does get difficult, but okay. You, I mean, I've never really gone with the rant about how, like, I, I'm not a, I love Squeenix a lot, and I, I absolutely 
enjoyed Final Fantasy VII when I was a kid, but when I went back to it over the years, it was like I knew how absolutely garbage the story was as it continued. Like, I'm not Absolute saying the game is bad. Garbage no, story. But you got to understand, like, there are so many plot holes in that story that it's just, it's Swiss cheese. Like, it. Fair enough. <laughs> the Eagles defense. Got it. Ooh. Oh, not yikes. wrong. Not wrong there. Yeah, well, we didn't lose the Giants, so. Yikes. Oh. Just giggle at Swiss cheese, Brett. <laughs> I giggled at the Eagles defense. Okay. Up oh. next. I in laugh the so I don't, so that I don't cry. <laughs> You're going to cry. I saw the score. Assassin's Creed Odyssey receives this update that has raised the level cap. You guys need to jump back in for that with the new quest. What am I playing, Kevin? It's the second Lost Tales of Greece called The Test of Judgment. Kevin, what is he playing? It goes. Your level cap goes from 50 to 70 now. Kevin, look over here and What's watch he me playing, ride Kevin? Yeah, I know what he's around. playing. I'll I'm watch talking you. to you. <laughs> look over here and watch me ride my rye horn. Okay? So well, I got to beat RDR2 still. Uh, I got back into Dark Souls, so that's going to consume me again. Oh. And then uh, Kingdom Hearts is coming, Metro Exodus is coming, and Anthem's coming. So and you're not you're not drinking Mountain Dew for Dark Souls. Yeah, you're you're not the Lizard King. Also, uh, Smash Bros comes out on December sixteenth. Oh, man, I'm so excited. It's about that the seventh. So probably I, not. Why do I always say that? what is December sixteenth? It's gotta that's be not a thing. I don't know, man. It but has to be something. Maybe it depends. <laughs> it depends know. on my. The days. sixth is is the is Game the Game Awards. Awards. And the seventh yeah, is Smash. I always the say sixteenth so is awful. just a day. Yeah, it's the day you're going to continue to play Smash. It's Smash Day. <laughs> Every day will be Smash Day. I don't actually know. Uh, also in this update was the introducing gear transmogrification and they added a smart loot system that supposedly uh, nudges drops towards your favorite play style. Oh, that's cool. That's sick. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. I'm sick of waiting. That's dope. In case you are not aware... Sony has announced they are not going to be at E3 2019 at both levels. Can we have canned laughter in the background? Now? <laughs> Whoa. The laugh track? At both, at both levels, there will not be an E3 conference, and they will not be on the E3 show floor. What is going on? I they are completely pulling out, and a PR representative confirmed they would not hold a press event around E3 either. Absolutely insane. What? They just to uh, just go and ghost. For they everyone. do have a quote, and I got this quote from GamesIndustry.biz. As the industry evolves, Sony Interactive Entertainment continues to look for inventive opportunities to engage the community. The statement reads: PlayStation fans mean the world to us, and we also want to innovate think differently, and experiment with new ways to delight gamers. As a result, we have decided not to participate in E3 2019. We are exploring new and familiar ways to engage our community in 2019 and can't wait to share our plans with you. Do you hear how wholeheartedly reversed those two statements are? Lawyer speak for we bombed at E3, so we ain't going First back. sentence. Pretty much. First, oh, sorry, paragraph. Uh, we but care about you guys. So we love bad. you so much. We're always looking for new and better ways to innovate. We're not showing up. <laughs> so, but the, before, what I don't like most about this is that it impacts E3 very negatively, and that's really the pinnacle of like gaming right now, like gaming announcements and things. Yeah, but then the like gaming Microsoft, industry, it's the gaming saying, party, hey, right? There. Well, exactly. Uh, the e ESA has said that um, they responded. The people who put on E3, they said this is not going to affect them at all. Well, because last they year say that. <laughs> they completely sold out of all tickets and they're actually growing this year because of what they have. They're already aware of Sony not coming. This would be and why Sony like, actually announced it. Because like, everything happens in the LA Convention Center. Right. But it's too big for that now. So they're actually taking up the whole mall <laughs> this year. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I just EA, they are they're off site. They're not even yeah, at no, the they, they have center. their own show. And Microsoft is at their own theater. And they do everything over there. So it's like you're going to be going around to all these different places during E3 is getting larger and larger every year. 
So this is actually the, it's not the first time big companies pulled out of E3, but it is the first time Sony has in 24, 24 years. Since so, yeah. E3 started. Yeah. Which, uh, you know? Which is why I don't like the statement from Sony to say, yeah, we're looking for new and better ways. I get, I get all of that. But then it, it just yeah. sounds like a cop out to then finish it with yeah. They want to be we're pulling out. innovative and think differently <sighs> and experiment. <clears throat> Sorry <clears throat> to delight us though. Yeah. Delight us. So to delight us. Yeah, that's back, what... back to what was Brennan, Brennan was saying about that. You know Todd Howard. Remember when he talked about it in Bethesda? I'm when... about Todd Howard right now. You do not want to bring up Todd. Howard <laughs> Look, we're not to me right now. <laughs> oh God. Are you in pain? Do you want to rant? Because you're going to get one. You continue down this Focus road. on what he said, though. He said that this was E3 was... Well, let's focus on what he said. Their biggest project... <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. But no. Okay. I'm referring to what he was talking Rated. about as E3, though. He was saying that it was... It's literally bringing a community together. Yes. Like, it, no so matter... Spencer said much of the same. That yeah. yeah. Nothing unifies, like, gaming, and E3 is... Everyone coming together, PC, Sony, and Microsoft. I mean, I, I Nintendo. What are you? Nintendo. I'm sorry. Nintendo out. I mean, leave out Nintendo. Uh, even though Nintendo, out. okay, though, so Nintendo's a great example. They pulled out of E3, mm -hmm. but they release a, a Nintendo E3 Direct. Yeah, and they're there on the showroom floor. Right. Yeah. They used to do conferences, but they pulled out of there and they restructured to do what they do now. They didn't completely leave. Hmm. I don't, they didn't this is, say, hey, we're not even holding a press conference. You know, I, what I, this really boils down to, to me, is that at the executive level, things were happening at Sony that in this generation they weren't ready for. They took control of it from out of the gate, and they've had tremendous success all the way up until now. And we're getting at the end of this life cycle. And they have four good games, first-party games, that they've been promoting at E3 this year. One came out, and so they have three more to go. Uh, Days Gone, still don't know what's going on with that one. That one was actually shown at the event where they revealed the PlayStation 4. You mean Left for Dead 1.5? Yeah. <laughs> and so, and it's still not out yet, and it's like, when is that coming? And it got delayed again. So I can do without another zombie horde game anyway. Yeah, but it actually looks good though. The only thing that I feel like seen. we say that about all of them. I, <laughs> I mean, this looks different. Let's be real. We haven't got any. Dates. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. So you you have three major titles that you're promoting right now. Mm -hmm. Not counting Days Gone because they don't really promote that one. Left 4 Dead 1.25. Everybody <laughs> forget that one. Well, I thought it was odd that they would promote that and The Last of Us together anyway. Mistake. But, they do it. No, it's, the Last of Us isn't a zombie game. It's a. It's more of like a surviving the fall of civilization as opposed to zombies. The zombie With zombies. Right. Yeah. It's not. Well, all right. Let me finish. So they got three. They got three, three titles right game. now, and coming into the year, their big two big uh, two of their biggest ones have released: God mm -hmm. of War and Spider -Man. Spider Man. Now they got three left, Ugh. and. From, I think it was probably around fall last year, they see that the PS5 or whatever it's going to be called is probably going to release in 2020. They know they're going to announce it next year, but from this summer at E3, they didn't have anything but those games. And Dreams is nowhere near ready. Neo 2. Neo 2 is nowhere near ready. All you got was a little cinematic for that. Oh, yeah. That Five seconds. Way out. And Days Gone, not even there. Who knows? And so they had people walk back and forth to waste time because they had nothing. Koi Pond. And so <laughs> they canceled PSX because they have nothing. They have this gap. So that's what I mean. At the executive level, when they were planning their strategy, somebody messed up because... Or from everybody from this year until PS five or whatever it's going to be called, they have a gap, and they are, uh, ha they're going to have to work really hard to close this empty space and fill it with something. That is why I think they're going to be pushing to announce their next gen console before Microsoft does. Even though how 
because they don't have anything. Yeah, but the problem with that is then that causes issues. Be fair, where Microsoft already Europe, announced their next gen console. No, they, 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 not, not, the no, they, they teased it. They teased anything. it. They didn't officially announce anything. Right. I think Sony's going to come out and announce it first because they don't have anything. No, like, see, the problem with that though is if you if you do okay, they might you you might be right, but the thing is if they do that, then you're you're showing your hand basically. You're saying this is all we have. This probably no, they've already said that. This they probably said that. isn't ready. But they've already we're said it when they canceled there PSX. And, they said we don't have anything. A3. We don't have anything. We're pulling out of PSX. Yikes. We don't want to disappoint you. And now we're disappointed. Oh, guess what? We're pulling out of E3 well, too because we still don't. One hundred percent disappointed. Now. All damage control. So when, you're, when you're pulling out of E3 2019 because you don't Eight have anything early. to show. Five hundred percent. Six months later is 2020 when PS5 is coming out. I'm the disappointed dad. Supposedly. You just got a D yeah. in your homework. Which tells me that garbage. some point in time next year, this innovative, innovative new something, new thing is something that they're going to do on a stage and reveal it. Mm. That's I. I just I, don't want to see it forced. I don't want to push. Like I, I get it that you're you're taking some flack. You're you're getting hurt, but if you're pu- forcing something out because it's all you've got left, uh, it's it, it's gonna you're gonna put something out there that's not ready and. Yep. I don't want to see that. Happen. I mean, the, to be fair, Microsoft announcing the Xbox and early is what really pushed Sony past. Well, them. they didn't though. All they said was no. He's saying originally when, oh, when yeah, the Xbox yeah. announced the Xbox, Xbox right. One, and then Sony came out and said, "Hey, we're underselling you or undercutting you on price." That's what. So maybe it's maybe it's that the, and the game sharing and all that stuff. They they maybe, said, "Yeah, we're not doing it that way," and it. But I mean, propelled I'm, their sales. I see what yeah, sure Kevin did. Kevin's saying because I think that might be what's happening, and um, but that will give Microsoft just the chance to do the same thing, the that's supreme edge. Saying. Well, that's Isn't the like, problem like, is that go ahead. you're seeing okay, so everything they see Microsoft doing right now is just another jab. They're jabbing, jabbing, jabbing. No, not really. Microsoft's still playing the catch-up game. No, I know, but that that's what I'm saying is to it's an like, excellent okay, catch-up sorry, game. Sorry, it was a it was a fight metaphor. When you're when you're fighting, when you're tired, you're throwing jabs, right? You're throwing jabs. So they did Xbox 18, XO 18, sorry. They uh, announced Oblivion and Expire, or Obsidian and in Exile. Obsidian and in Exile, sorry. Uh, you knew where I was going. But they announced these, and, and then the E3, they announced all of that. And then they're saying, look at all this we've got. Look at, look at what's pass. going on. KH3 was on their stage first, and then on their stage again at XO 18 when they had the 100 Acre Woods. Like everything they're doing is, it's not the big knockout punch, but it's. We're we're catching up. We're coming back, and they have points. a long way to go to catch up. Getting on the car. The thing is, they're exactly they're getting enough on the fight car. Metaphors? There are a lot of metaphors that I'm throwing at you, but that's that's how they're that's the way to do it. And the problem is, yeah, Sony Microsoft has is no focused. Response. Microsoft is focused, and like this generation's over. Micro- Microsoft's made a mistake, though. I mean, not Microsoft. Sony's made a mistake. There are huge mistakes here. Like you, you should have stayed. Like it doesn't matter if you don't have much. You should have stayed. You gotta you find something. Yeah, that's the thing. You no, get, see, that's great. The mistake <laughs> is that they don't understand what a conference means exactly to their fan base. Just to have their community. Like, yeah, right. They think, and it's not just them, because if you want to talk about BlizzCon, how they totally <laughs> fucked up this year. <laughs> Because they oh, lost gosh. sight of what BlizzCon is supposed to be. Uh, these so companies it's not supposed to be an app cash grab. What? No, it's not. Weird. These companies get lost in these things because they think performance matters the most of everything, and they lose sight of what the fans actually want. And the For fans the wanted to come, be together to celebrate what these games mean to them. Right in a social atmosphere. So, well, BlizzCon did have the world championship for Overwatch, which was right. Yeah. I mean, just their keynote, like they didn't have to do a keynote this year. They could have just skipped it. Correct. The biggest thing coming out of there was, uh, um, no Warcraft three remastered. That was the biggest announcement coming out of there. I mean, they announced Ash. So that's, that was huge, but really it's just another character in a game that's ongoing. That's not super news that you need a keynote yeah, it's not for. Incredibly huge. The biggest thing there was Warcraft Three. Like Hearthstone got another expansion, but you don't need a keynote for that. Well, my biggest problem. Well, with hold what on. They Hearthstone did, got another stand- expansion. Yeah. <laughs> my biggest problem with what they did is that. <laughs> Murlocs are the they best. They didn't. Um, 
there was a murloc. They knew it was wrong. There. They knew it was a problem. That was my murlocs. That was my biggest issue with it. Fifty murlocs. Oh my god. Oh. Fifty thousand murlocs. They did that. No, fifty. <laughs> An army people of murlocs dressed up as murlocs, walking around. <laughs> they weren't happy about immortal either. Weird. Well, that's that was my biggest issue with it. Is they knew it was wrong. They knew it was a bad idea. They came out and well, said, "Guys, temper your expectations." Da, 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 da. Like you knew. You, well, you, you don't. You don't finish the show with that. No, that's what you start the show with. Because that's what people are going to remember. Don't even do that. And you just don't put that in the show. You just you don't put that in a trailer. Six <laughs> days later. You don't have later. anything for a show. You don't have one. Or you don't even make that, and you focus on making Diablo Four and announce yeah. that. Oh no, they're definitely yeah. making that. Yeah, obviously they're making it, but I want to see it. But anyway, my point he of wants that, to see it. my point of the conference is, it mouth. doesn't. Every <laughs> conference doesn't have to be E3. E3 is E3. So when you're doing your fans service, you don't have to have these keynotes trying to show the biggest thing. Did you just put an S on fan service? No. I definitely heard fans. There was there was an extended s- not a, not a, not a service. <laughs> it was fan service, yeah. Definitely fan was. service. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, but to keep it in the simplest form, Sony messed up somewhere along the line with their scheduling and delays happen and they just got into a situation where they don't have anything have anything left before the next generation's coming. I don't know if that means that PS five comes out and then The Last of Us comes out on PS four. If that type of situation happens, they're Ugh. in big trouble. That'd be terrible. If it comes out console comes out with their launch titles and the last of us comes out on ps4 and you get a remastered version on ps5 that would be the the ultimate worst scenario for them especially with the momentum that xbox has going forward i don't think also don't forget that they are pushing streaming onto us heavy in the next gen mixer no i'm talking about subscription based games as oh, on Game well, Pass. Well, did you see what they're doing with the new Xbox One? Yeah. The, Where uh, they're removing the yeah, disc? Next year, so there's supposed to be one coming without a cheaper. disc drive in it. Streaming only. Yeah, but that that's two parts. So that, that does make it streaming only. However, no, not streaming only, but uh, digital only. Di- sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Digital but only, however, it makes it, it, makes it cheaper. Yeah. So if they're going to if they're gonna worry about their fans and say, we want everybody to play Xbox regardless, we, we will change the design for you to make it so it's more available, that's... that's. But something we did hear about Xbox's next generation codename Scarlet mm-hmm. is Xbox that it will be Oracle. two devices. One would be streaming capable only, and the other one would be the... Normal. Bigger version. Right. It would have, it would have the, the y. first one built into it, but... It's Xbox Oracle. Uh, let, let's talk about <laughs> take the name the streaming services a little bit. No, don't take we without got some royalties. Numbers. We got some numbers <laughs> for this third quarter about these streaming services. And, Game Pass. Well, Game Pass is in there, but they were only partially in there because they just launched for quarter three. All oh, right. But uh, number one is. Sony's PlayStation Now service. Ugh. Oh, that is tragic. In that quarter, they brought in $143 million. That's I it. don't even know anybody that has that service. Do you? No. I, I can't. I have <laughs> no EA friends is also that in that. the list. That makes sense. Well, it's mostly so. They have dope, and I was Access, to Origin, Access, and Origin, Access, Premier. Those combined to bring in $90 million. That's a dope sale, though. That's awesome. I like EA Access a lot. There's a little bit over half of that was from EA Access. And then you got Game Pass brought up the rear with roughly $41 million. And they were only partially in it. So. And What's you have to the per-year price of uh, PlayStation now? Or- I don't even know if there's a per-year. I'll find out. There's, it's that. different for that. Yeah, it's pretty... They're pretty equal across the board now. I my think. thoughts, my question, and is, Sony changed it up so that you can download games now too. With all access, um, that might have skewed their sales numbers a little bit. Why? Because you got two years of Game Pass with the all access. Oh, so yeah. I don't think it would have counted towards their Game Pass sales. It would have counted towards their Xbox sales. 
And remember, this is only, they were only partially Part in right, that. So. But uh, Phil, you got something? No, I was going to talk about the VR bundles that they got going on here. That's pretty wild. Oh, the sales numbers? Yeah. Well, not sales, but what they're selling off for Black Friday. Guys, keeping track of Black Friday, it's going to be gnarly. Yeah. Phil Spencer actually made a topic about streaming with Game Pass. He's actually touting it. And he said that uh, actually people are they're having game sales are increasing with Game Pass. As far as I'm seeing, well, you get no... Game Pass discounts too if you want to actually buy the game yeah. rather than just download the license. You can actually buy it. There's no there's no actual sale for PlayStation now or any any like yearly thing for it. But they do have a twenty dollar off uh, the PlayStation Plus for a, for a twelve months. So what's it cost monthly then? Uh, for the PlayStation Plus? No, oh, monthly for the no. now the streaming PlayStation service. Now. Right. I want to say it's I want to say it's ten bucks, but I could be completely wrong. We'll get back to that. I'll tell you what Phil said about Game Pass. He said, when you put a game like Forza Horizon 4 on Game Pass, you instantly have more players of the game, which is actually leading to more sales of the game. Some people have questioned that, but when State of Decay 2 launched, you saw, if you looked in the U.S. at the MPD, you saw this game selling really well the month it launched on Game Pass. You say, well, isn't everything just going to... Isn't everyone just going to subscribe for $10 and go play this? But no, gamers find things to play based on what everybody else is playing. What's number one on Mixer? What's number one on Twitch? What's my friends list saying? What are people saying on Discord? They go everywhere to see. And when these games hit something like Game Pass with all these different players, it instantly raises awareness. And it's driving them sales. So, not to not to stop you there. Well, you did. So one hundred percent. So it's a, it's ten bucks a month, a hundred dollars for a year. Wait, for that's for the PS for the now. Do they have like sales and things like Game Pass does? Like oh, that's PS Plus. Oh, gotcha. But there you go. Thank you for, for you. Anyway, continue. I've got one more piece of news this week. And this is for. Anybody that's interested in playing Overwatch for free, starting Tuesday, November 20th, which, if you're listening to this, it is Tuesday. <laughs> and you also, can, Ash just came to comp. Yeah. They are doing a free trial, which is going to last until the following Monday, November 26th. All game modes, everything like that will mm-hmm. be included. So if you haven't played Overwatch or you want to for free, maybe you played before, and you want to for free, that trial is available for you. Get out there and play it. All right, that's it for the news. Now we're going to go into our first feature, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Ew. Pikachu. <laughs> Don't hit me with that. And Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. I saw some of the Eevee stuff, dude. It's so adorable. I can't I know, deal with it. it. <laughs> Eevee like, tries to paw your hand and stuff. You're like, stop. Pikachu plays patty cake with you. That's adorable, too. It's not too. patty cake. It's high fives. All right, let's make it. Uh, it's a man. You high five his hand as he moves. Okay, yeah, that's it's patty cake. He so these hands. games have <laughs> just released on the Nintendo Switch. Currently, Brett is playing it Brett right now. He's been playing <laughs> 26 <laughs> hours, 27 hours? Yes. I just found out I caught my 60th Pokemon species. Congratulations. So I'm almost halfway there. So tell us a little bit no, about this not. game. <laughs> There's 151. There. I said I'm almost halfway there, and I just no. found the Savari Zone. No, right? 13. I'm, I'm going. Uh, honestly, it for me, I was excited about it anyway. But the thing I like, the thing I think is the best about it is that it's going to put a lot of people's fears at rest. Um, when we discussed it before, Brennan said this is watered down Pokemon Light. I never said any of that. I those said were it's the limited exact words. Those in were some capacity. Watered were down the, oh Pokemon God, Light. Limited is the word I used. He, he, he was being. He, he He's being nice today. Watered down, He's right. being nice today. So. Oh my God. <laughs> they did take a few things out. Catching the catching system is obviously different. The, but at the same time, there's so much being added into it that it it's still feels like a Pokemon game. Um, there's still the battles with the trainers. That even with the Pokemon, which is one of the things they took out, you still do have to battle some of the Pokemon because, and as the game describes it, some of them wake up angry and they just want to fight. So you, before you can even get a chance to catch them, you do have to fight them. Uh, so they 
that's not completely out of the game. It is a lot different. Um, you do level up based on how many Pokemon you catch, which is another, the only complaint I've actually seen online about it since it released is that you have to, it basically makes you catch everything. Um, which, since they've added the natures and things like that in the game where any Pokemon could be uh, a shiny, it can be bigger, it can be smaller, it can be, they have so many variations, their stats can be good. It basically, you want to catch everything anyway. So as far as complaints go, I have, the only thing I've got for the game is that during the animations, um, and I'm going to start with my negatives here because there are so many positives. It'll take so much longer. Um, Might as well set up camp. <laughs> the animations for the normal type Pokemon, they kind of get lost a little bit because where the battle system is so impressive and so well Robust. done and <laughs> and so beautiful, right. the normal Pokemon, <laughs> they lose that. They they lose the ability to do that because their their kicks and punches and things like that, they don't show up i'm not gonna be talking ever again they just punch or or it's shown a little bit that's a little foot in the face like it used to be so it's like quick you've said your 10 words i did (laughs) and the other pokemon like you use when you if you use lightning there's the whole clouds form over top of the battlefield that darkens and a lightning strike comes down like it's so impressively done and then the normal pokemon you're just like oh he threw a punch that was cute so physical attacks are physical attacks no right? not right. physical because there's a fighting style that's yeah. that does get it it's literally normal it's just right, normal it's attacks literal like the, the normal attacks right, like, like quick pound, attack quick attack yeah. like those right. they don't get anything I just met Jesse and James give me that that's story <laughs> no he's trying to play story he's doing it it's too late um, uh, so I have a question for you Here you go. yeah okay How... pass it to you no <laughs> here's, the, here's the question go ahead Hate to have you killed at this table. How is Kanto on the Switch? Weirdly enough, it's the same map. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's it's beautiful. Um, the the one caveat I do have to give you, I have not played it on TV yet. Mm. The reason for that being that it's so much fun to literally take it wherever I want to go. I'm playing with it right now at this table. Um, so I haven't put put it on the TV. It's I don't have any fears about it. The game itself is beautiful. The the time they put into not only the surroundings of the city, this one actually, the, they did make changes. Um, Kanto isn't the tiny little pixelated area that you Black saw in the old mm-hmm. games. Um, it's beautiful. It's vibrant. It's Fuchsia, very, very colorful. It, it, exactly. I was watching you play it. I was, in it Fuchsia, jaw-dropping. The city I'm in right now, Pokemon are, r- very rare Pokemon are just wandering around the city, but they belong to the city, so you can't catch them. But they're just wandering around, and it's, they're, each one of them is so detailed and so different that um, it, it's it's hard to actually describe just seeing it and how you feel because it's like we've all since we were kids thought, well, man, it would be cool if Pokemon were real and I was walking around in my yard and there was a Caterpie. But That'd be terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Get I don't out think anybody that ever would <laughs> You know what I mean? Like th- this makes you feel like that and um, – it's like, yeah, I wish it was Skyrim and I was fighting frostbite spiders all the time. <laughs> I love it. Uh, no, no, I get a flamethrower if I saw a bunch of caterpies <laughs> coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean is it's it, you kind of get that that feeling a little bit where in this world Pokemon do exist and in they're there, they're present, they're they grow up, they age, um which is another really cool difference in the game is that you you don't see a, a billion Charmanders walking around. They they grow up. They've you see Charizards, you see full-on evolved die. Pokemon there. So and talk about a little bit about capturing. What's the capturing like using the Joy-Con? Okay, so using the Joy-Con, this is going to be, it's a little bit easier. So using the um, the Joy-Cons on the actual console. You, Attached to it, yeah. Yeah. So you just move it around, and once they're centered, you press A, and it throws the Pokeball dead center of wherever you have it aimed. So that that capture system is there like a reticle or yep yeah there's a there's a little dot that'll well they have the reticle on them actually in the in the shrinking circle much like Pokemon Go for the, anybody that's played it it'll show you where you want to hit um, the smaller you let the shrinking circle get the better the throw if you're aimed directly at it uh, so you the higher level Pokemon the the harder it should be to catch them the harder it is they'll move around your screen you got to aim up you got to aim down it's, it, they move all over the place. Um, they kind of trolled us a little bit in Mount Moon because you used to get so sick of running into Zubats. In Mount Moon, Zubats are worth a lot of experience because they fly on the screen and they're hard to catch. So right. they trolled us a little bit and said, now you got to catch all them Zubats. You're welcome. 
So I'm still it, mashing that flea button. <laughs> <laughs> then it is an option you have, but uh, it's the capture system in itself is m- much like Pokemon Go with the Joy Cons. Uh, you just got to aim it and throw it, and you're gonna hit it. With the if you got the Pokeball, that's a little bit different. You've actually got to aim the Pokeball and throw it at the screen. Right. That you're talking about the accessory, the Pokeball yes, Plus. The Pokeball Plus comes with Mew if you got it early. Um, which Mew actually does count in the Pokédex. It is number 151, so if you do not get the Pokéball Plus, there isn't a way in the game to complete your Pokédex as of this time. Don't forget, you can transfer through... I'm not trading you my Mew. Pokémon Go. No, that doesn't count for that, though. It goes to... There's a separate arena for Pokémon Go Pokémon. So oh, so they, count as they won't count? Sure, okay. in the game. For everyone um, who didn't get the Pokeball, you may now spike your Switch. <laughs> <laughs> there may be DLCs in the future. I'm not sure or something. Um, the way they set up this game makes me does make me wonder about that because in this game, Alola does exist. The Alolan regions, everybody's aware of them. Yeah, They're aware that it's a world that's not a region. Um, so you meet trainers that are from Alola, which is how they work the Alolan Pokemon into the game. They say, hey, I'm, I'm new here. I don't. I have this Pokemon. If you've got its Cantonian version, I would trade you for it. So that's how you end up with like the can or the Alolan versions of, of Fernape. Um, is that is that Alolan? No, not even close. Uh, but good try. Um, and so they've worked so much into the game that I I wouldn't be surprised if they worked in something like Pokemon Let's Go in Fernape, and they it was just another region added to the game um, to travel to or something like that. Does Pikachu play Pikachu? Uh, I haven't. No, that's trash. If not. I haven't seen him yet. Uh, he did, when I was showing Kevin, have a bucket on his head for the first time I'd ever seen yeah, that Yeah, he had one. a bucket on his head, and then Brett tickled him, and then gave him some bananas. Yes. That's he the most me, terrifying sentence. He told me he wanted to go to the beach, and that's why he had the bucket on his head. He wanted to build Did you take dances. him to the beach? I have not taken him to the beach yet. Oh, you're a terrible wow. podcast. You are the worst person ever. tickle him by putting his finger to the screen and yes. tickling. I and witnessed it. Pikachu reacted to it. He does. And if you poke him, he swats at you. He doesn't like you to be poking at him. So that's a pretty cool element. I'm load You're the up worst peak parent ever. <laughs> you can't even take your boy to the which, to the freaking beach. That actually brings up a cool point as well, because your bond and the, the amount of time you do spend hanging out with Pikachu, petting him, uh, feeding him berries, it impacts High the five-ing. game. Um, your bond with your Pokemon does impact it. So sometimes my my Pikachu, because I've obviously spent quite a bit of time petting him. Uh, actually does impact my battles because he'll randomly dodge a move and it, it'll pop up a little heart and say, because you warned him, because you told him it was coming, he dodged it. And that's not something that happens if your bond isn't that level. How much time have you spent petting? <laughs> I've, I usually 24 feed him of his 26 hours. <laughs> Most of the time I'm spending feeding him berries because he just munches on them and takes them in little bites and it's just adorable. <laughs> but the time I... Opened it up and he was there waiting to high five me and played a little high five game. That was the coolest thing. I, I probably yelled out loud because I was like, oh my God. Oh, he did. Pikachu wants Brennan. a high five. Look at this. And it, so it just the, that's where I say they've added so much, so many other elements in, even if they've taken things out, they've added a lot in there. Bonding, um, bonding with your Pokemon. That's a, but that's been a thing. Bonding. Not as in depth as what you have. Right. It's like what you're, what you're talking about is like a whole new level of bonding. Well, I'm but... talking Pokemon yellow and Pokemon yellow, which well, this is a of remake of. Right. It's, you didn't have these things. Huh. So they've, they've kept up with well, it. they didn't actually call this a remake. Well, yeah, that's, it's actually, so it's a whole new story. A it game. is a different story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, that's going. In the newer Pokemons, they have bonding? Yes. Yeah. Uh, since, Nature's. Uh, um, Ooh, X and Y, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, because that's where it's this the system platinum. comes from. So it's got natures. It's got um, yep, nature's stats, too. possible stats. Some of your Pokemon you're going to catch, they're never going to be as good as another, the exact same Pokemon that has better stats. Uh, so it, it you can so judge good them. luck on your roll if you did get the Pokeball Plus oh, yeah. with your Mew. Because my Mew actually rolled poorly. He's, he's okay, but he's not going to be as good as he ever could be. So there is that in in element to the game. He's not going to be the very best. He will never be the very best. I uh, will be because I'll catch 151 Pokemon. All of you that didn't get the Pokeball Plus, you won't be. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll be the very best. Do you- <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. What do you got? I I mean I have I am upsetting that I can't play this game right now because I'm a huge Pokemon fan. 
Well, what questions might you have? Oh, uh, well, I mean, he he's already literally uh, he's he's given me the rundown of everything I wanted to hear about it. What I don't like about it so far is that like I would have picked Evie because I don't know if you guys have she- seen it, but I have an Evie T-shirt that I absolutely love. It's the it's never seen it, never want to. It's the evolutions it's right of Evie. Now. It's got the rainbows all over it. It's pretty dope. I think but I have seen dope. it actually. But the thing about it is, like, I I'm a big Evie fan, and I would want Evie you so like I can Evie more than Pikachu. E yeah, I mean, I guess. Ugh. But I'd probably pick the Pikachu version just because it's more iconic, and I it's, can't I can't evolve my Evie. Has growth. Well, well I, I have an evolved Evie. Eevee. I have three evolved Evies, so I have all of the 151. The original you, Evie evolution. Can you Sylvie on it or no? No, can't do anything. No. Just, just the only three. Nah. But you can ride them, so I can ride Flareon. Ride what? Flareon. <laughs> yeah, you can ride the Pokemon. Jolteon now. around. So you Could, didn't show you riding Snorlax. I mean, I no, but that's yeah, the Evies are like. Yeah, but not the you, adult like you can ones. ride a Persian. You can ride basically the fully transformed anything you can ride. That's dope. Um, you want to ride that uh, Blastoise around for me? Yes, I will do that for you. Real quick. <laughs> Isn't Charizard only like five seven? That. Yeah, five foot seven. Yes, we agree. Isn't that yeah, Charizard five, seven. Type? Yeah, I can tell you right now. I can How is he supposed to ride Charizard then? It's the same height. Delicate. My Charizard the wingspan is six foot seven. That's a big Charizard. He a tall boy. 263 pounds and 7 ounces. That is a big, a big lot boy. of weight for a 6 foot uh, 7 thing, though. Malnourished. It's very <laughs> soft. By the way, Charizard. I was I bet he could dunk, though, at least. On the beach. I'm sure he could. Yeah. <laughs> Blastoise doesn't let you ride him. Oh. Just follows you around. Interestingly enough. He's hardcore, He's the man. first one I found that you can't ride. He said... Show, show me Charizard. Let me see. I haven't checked the starters. I hope the starters you could ride. That's going to be upsetting if you can't. That doesn't make any sense. Where would you ride Venusaur? In his mushroom? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I don't know, man. You could figure it out. You can ride Charizard and he oh flies Oh, my God. He flies. flies. It's, it's Show it to me. <laughs> that is dope. Can you see it? So I didn't. That's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> is that pretty cool? A is that a tear, Kevin? Yeah. I am not crying. <laughs> wow. Um, that is so see. cool. Let me see if I can ride. Anyway, Venusaur. when so we started you're... playing, it has changed any of my reservations about the game. So, how you are don't you feeling about Venusaur it? Now? Either Charizard is the only one you can well, ride. He was just Charizard. riding a Charizard, who's my favorite Pokemon. So, do you picture yourself getting into this one? Probably not. You guys haven't when played the two player yet. Either. I'll probably play it. No, we have not played two player yet. Why not? Uh, I've only been playing it on the handheld. I was beating oh. Starlink as well. Well, you can play it on handheld if you detach them. And yeah, put it on the kickstand. I know. I was, <laughs> he didn't uh, know that, did he? No. So, would you recommend this to people? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, God, I'd recommend yeah. any the poke game ever. We to haven't even Pokemon discussed the battle game. system, but the battle system is incredible. I know. I saw. It's, poke game. <laughs> I actually just got another partner move, which are like special moves that only your Pikachu or your Eevee can. What's learn. the new one called? It's called uh, Splishy oh Splash. My God. <laughs> Splishy Splash. And it's a water-based move. For I need you to. I need you to get into a fight right now and show me Splishy so Splash. That one, but we'll save that. There for are later. the way they do and it is so zap. cool though because Zippy Zap. Um, it, so you say, okay, why does Pikachu have a flying type move? Oh well, he uses a bunch of helium blooms to fly up in the air and body slam. <laughs> so, like the way they do it, it's a great they, animation. They can kind of show you. Well, this is why Pikachu has a flying type move. Did you take him to the beach yet? He's on the beach right now. Okay, let's He's see. Let's see him. I want to see the interaction for you, so you can see the surf <gasps> move. I want. It's so, time to splissy. Are you on Gyarados? Uh, you can ride Gyarados. I've actually seen <laughs> another trainer on top of Gyarados in the water. Gyarados. So because surf. Do you have Gyarados yet? No, I do not. Not yet. He's I've, working on it. Oh, that's that, that. Actually, brings up another point. Um, yeah. Whatever Pokemon you put in your Pokeball Plus, it counts your steps, and they gain experience for it. So I wore my Pokeball Plus to work the other day. And walked 5,800 steps that day, and my um, Magikarp my Magikarp gained 4,900 experience, which for him was 11 levels at the time. Oh wow! And they also find you things, um, rare candies, rare candies, things like that, are not exactly scripted as they were in the old games. There, you can find them anywhere. Okay, talk about the candies for a minute. What are the what's the purpose of the candies? Okay, so their their candy system is your levels, um, basically. I can't, my, my Pokemon that, like I was talking about earlier, based on his nature and this and that, he's never going to be the greatest. Uh, he's never going to be a Pikachu that was born with better stats, yes. basically is how it works. At the same level. Right. But I can take a quick candy 
and feed it to him, and he's going to get faster. I can take a health candy, a mighty candy, all these candies that are in the game, and they improve their their stats so they can he can eventually get there. He just needs a little bit of help. Uh, so I can feed them all these candies. Right, so rare candies don't just level them up anymore? Rare candies leveled them up. That's different. But this candy system, they've got quick got candies. It. I can actually go look at it. I got So if you give them a strength boost, how long does that last? Forever. They're forever. And, uh, oh, so forever. it's a permanent yeah, the, stat The increase. candies are a permanent stat increase. It. Oh, okay. So and potentially so you, you, could, ta- you could take that Mew and make the Mew into a better Yeah, I've Mew. already done it. My will Mew, the, when it was... stats actually change? Yeah. And oh, okay. it shows you where, what they're improving. And they have different sizes. So I can take a quick candy and it goes up one stat boost. And then it shows you their combat power and how much that increased when you did all this. But so the, just because you rolled an uh, okay one, it can be come yeah, to the very it, best. Like mine right now is... Uh, if you look at it, it says good. You're gonna have to move that back enough so I can watch you. Okay. Yeah. This is oh, splishy he's wearing splash. a little suit. Oh yeah, he's in the he's in the <clears throat> suit. Splishy splash. He surfs on a surfboard. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> um, I'm dead. Okay. There's a Jake noise I hadn't heard yet. So, <laughs> which I mean, there's just so much in this game I haven't talked about. Uh, the the suit that he's talking about. I went to a Pokemon funeral. So I can't naturally go to a Pokemon what? funeral without a suit. So Pikachu was in a suit. So he's got formal wear. Now I'm assuming that's, <laughs> that's story. so dark. No. no. No? You don't have to do that. Oh, okay. It's something I went through. Side quests? Side stuff, yep. This is, this is insane. Uh, you got to talk to everybody when you play this game. You're going to find r- random things. Uh, I found this one guy who was a jerk. Um, he said, what's your favorite type of Pokemon, puppies or kitties? And I said, puppies. And he said, here, have a kitty so I can change your mind. And I said, well, that's not very nice. <laughs> I wanted the puppy. So gave him a Persian. He gave me the fully evolved Persian when I wanted the the puppy, which was our canine. And Don't he, you have our canine at I this point? I do now, but originally and I now was you like, have well, a Persian. That's, that's mean. And I can't. I actually couldn't get Persian in any other way in my game. Because no, look, it's another so choose puppies. Eevee. Kevin, yeah, I'm going choose to. puppies. Oh, you Definitely. Want, you want to choose kitties. I hope he gives you the dog. Give you the puppy. What? Oh, yeah. He's going to change my mind. Yes, yeah, yes, you yes. He yes, change yes. your mind. That's his whole purpose. He just said Never that. listen to Brad. I don't know Never. why I switched that around. Terrible. But Maybe I was trying to sabotage you. He a was saboteur. not trying. He was saboteur. definitely doing that. But it's, it's just, you want to talk to everybody because those partner moves, you don't get those if you don't talk to a random guy in each Poke Center. Okay. Um, there's the traders, they... There, there's nothing to show that they want to trade you their Alolan Pokemon, but you you'll find them. You'll run into them if you talk to them. So you want to definitely talk to everybody uh, because the game has so many elements that you're not. If you don't talk to everybody, you're gonna miss something. Um, there's there, there's just so much that goes on. The story. Um, Team Rocket is back, and this one they are actually Jesse and James uh, from the original animes. Not Team Steam. So. I right, hand that over. I'm just gonna, let me do the fight. Okay, you can yes. do the fight. Yes, He's doing the fight. <laughs> do zippy zap. Oh, I mean it'll work really well here. Zippy zap works automatically. It's a critical hit every time, and it hits first every time. So the the partner moves are really cool because they have special things. Um, and these are changeable, right? Or well, no? yours will have different ones in mine. Oh, okay, yours. Well, has, you'll have Eevee. Your, right. your EV version has completely different moves, uh, so it'll be cool to see the different animations between them. Because I yep. know yours has an electric type for its first one called Buzzy Buzz, so I'm interested to see what that looks like on yours. It's actually Buzz just Buzz. EV running, just like Pikachu does, and headbutting, just like Pikachu does. No, I don't think it is. I think they're all completely different. I will be we will see. very impressed if that's the truth. So what else about... Pokemon, let's go. Uh, we've covered capturing. We've well, we haven't really discussed battling, but the battles are just you. It, you, I mean, you have we, to see it to really understand it quite a bit. Gym gym battles, they got those in there. Gym battles are cool. Uh, you you of course have to go through all the puzzles with the gym that they used to have. I just got to the ninja one and fell through three traps on the way trying to get to him, and I was like, no, I'm, I got to talk about this podcast. I can't focus on this. Um, so. Gym battles are very cool. Um, your partner Pokemon, when you do win a battle, will give you a nice little high five and a smirk and get all charged up, excited, because he knows you won something. Um, very fun. Uh, you mentioned something to me earlier that you were happy about. The Pokemon are all with you. Oh, yeah. Pokemon box. Uh, that's I can't believe I forgot about it. Um, before, you used to have to run back and boot up your PC and take your Pokemon out. In this one, you carry your Pokemon box around with you. 
Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know where he keeps them all, but they're all stuffed in a box. There's yep. there's a box that you just go, okay, so back, back. I want this Pokemon now. I'm gonna pull him out of the box, switch him in my party, and he's there. Um, you can also we've talked about riding the Pokemon. To do that, you pull them out of their Pokeball, and they just run alongside you. Um, they will find you things like um, berries, and depending on the rideable ones, won't because they're obviously not I running can, around I, finding. I, I can one hundred percent see why you'd be petting Pikachu. Right? Doesn't it feel nice? You're it just, is. He he gets excited. He does things. <laughs> he looks like he's so tired right now. Is he weak? <laughs> he, I don't no, know what's I, happening I think he's anymore. chill. If they have status effects, things will impact them. Like if he's poisoned, when you go to play with him, he'll hold his stomach like he's sick and doesn't feel good. <laughs> so status effects do impact it <laughs> it's, it's very cool it's it's just there's and there's it's, so much to do i'm 26 hours in and he's just kind of like moving with the breeze the, go to the on. oh you obviously found out how to go to the menu put the lab <laughs> coat on him don't poke him i just got a new lab <laughs> coat hurting his bond lab over there. coat accessory for you um he's gonna leave you yikes jake's gonna poke him right, 700 charizard and Mew and venus and blastoise and everybody else how do you life. how do you do that where do i go Oh, you're going to do it. Oh, see. I mean, I wasn't, but you can do it. Um, so the Pokemon box was a very cool addition. Same with TMs. Before, you used to use a TM and it would go away. In this one, you can use it as many times as you want. Um, Hyper Beam. Yeah, I spent $100,000 on Hyper Beam and gave it to every Pokemon that would possibly learn it. So yeah, nice. that one made me pretty happy. Does it happy still take to... a turn to charge? Nope. It's, uh, it does take a turn to relax, but it doesn't take a turn to charge. I actually, that's much better. Yeah, it's, it's it's just they got rid of a lot of the things I didn't like and added a lot of things I do like, and that's just it's just such a good game. I I can't recommend it enough. Um, I completely forgot what I was doing. Clothing trunk. <laughs> I gotta pick up outfit for Pikachu real quick. Any last thoughts on Pokemon before we move on? Nope. Buy uh, it, buy it honestly, now. just buy it. If you've got a Switch, there's no reason not to. Uh, I'm dressing and if my, you don't got a switch, buy a switch to buy it. I'm dressing my Pikachu as Team Rocket right now because I've raided one of their bases and found a Team Rocket outfit. And I know All right, you're gonna have to hand it. that back yep, over. That's what I'm waiting <laughs> yeah. for. Don't uh, forget, there is actually, if you do not have a switch, there is a Pokemon Let's Go Switch out there. There is. Uh, that you can look for the best one that they've released so far, as far as collector's editions. Yeah, it's very nice. And what's next, there, uh, Kevin? Well, do uh, you want to do a review discussion for that soon? We'll stay tuned for that. Yeah, um, I'll probably have it beaten discussion. by next podcast, so we can definitely throw one out there. All right, sounds good. So Jake look forward to next week. Still petting my Pikachu, by the That way. one. And up next is we are revealing the categories for the official TSGG Game Awards 2018. This year, we are going to have the following categories. Game of the Year, Best PS4 Exclusive, Best Nintendo Switch Exclusive, Best Xbox One Exclusive, Best Narrative, Best Art Direction, Best Musical Score, Best Action Game, Best Adventure Game, Best Shooter Best RPG, Best Fighting Game, Best Ongoing Game, Best Multiplayer, Best Indie Title, and the Best Collector's Edition. And Most Anticipated Game. And Most Anticipated 2019 Game. Or just Anticipated Game. Anticipated Game. Because you don't think it's coming in 2019? This, oh, his, mine is. his is. Mine is. I don't know about you guys. Probably n- never coming. <laughs> <laughs> Not with a track record. Yeah. Uh, so those are our categories, and we are going to announce the nominees next week as well. But that is all the time we have for this week. I want to thank you all for listening, and thank you guys for being on the panel. Don't forget to tune in to our Twitch on December December 2nd, at 12 noon for our Extra Life stream, part two. We'll see you guys next week. (laughs) See you all next time. See ya. Bye.